Hello, 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 and welcome to It's All Good. I'm your host, Latavia, and I'm back for another episode. It is a new week, and I am excited to say that this week I am joined by a special guest, I would say a repeat guest, um, back by uh, popular demand, I should also add, uh, but my cousin, Corey Mitchell, is back um, here hanging out with me today for the podcast, so welcome, Corey. What's that? And how y'all doing out there? All right. Well, I am, like I said, I'm excited to have you back. It has, now that I think about it, I still have not seen you in person, but I am, uh, wait, no, I'm lying. I did. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I re- after I said it, I realized I did. I saw you in July. Um, yes, 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 yes. So I take that back. But, but um, thank you for being here. And like I said, before we get into it, One of the things that I do to start every episode is to share something or someone that I'm grateful for. So as the guest, I will give you the honors of going first. So please let us know something or someone that you're grateful for. Our grandmother, she is 92 years old and she's still in her right mind and still drives and go to the grocery store and takes her car to get oil changed. (laughs) Yes, yes, and cooks. And cooks. (laughs) Yeah, still cooking. Like, you know, the last time I was there, she was there. She had her chair. She, like, made an adjustment. But, but no, yeah, that is, I, like I said, that is, I smile every time I think about her in general. But then, like you said, just the fact that at 92, she is still out here doing her thing and will not take no for anything. She don't like it, but she got a smartphone. Oh, oh, that is right. Yes. I still haven't caught her on duo. We always miss each, miss each other for the video calls, but I'm gonna keep trying. Well, that is great. Um, I kind of want to just say ditto, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give the other one that I was saying in terms of what I'm grateful for, um, is real, honestly, it's technology as much as it annoys me at times I'm grateful for it because like you were just saying grandma has the smartphone so and even this you know zoom it allows us to stay connected even when we're not able to you know like physically be in the same space as each other and I know for me growing up spread out all the time away from everyone is sometimes I wish like oh if we had these this technology then how much easier it would have been to stay in contact and almost like feel like you're there even when you're not there for different events because like now you can we can do a video call or we could do zoom and like although I'm not there I can see what's going on here what's going on so I'm grateful for the advances in technology and the access that we have to it so that we can uh, you know stay in contact with each other and as family keeps growing uh, just kind of stay connected especially since we are still in this panini press known as coronavirus um, and all of the different variations that have come about since. So um, like I said, grateful for that and also grateful to have you here. But I know that, like I said, that we did see each other in July. It was actually to celebrate grandma. Um, But uh, I guess just let me, tell me a little bit about what's been going on with you since you were last on the podcast. This was last on the podcast. We talked about the foundation, but now the foundation is an official 501c3 organization, which was in this press to fill. So now we're, as a, my team is trying to get that up and going. By this time next year, I plan to be a household name. All right. Our, only thing we're looking forward to doing is giving back. March 5th is the inaugural CMMS Foundation Walk, which is Corey Mitchell Motion Scrolls' Foundation Walk. It's going to be at Metal Lake Park in Columbia, South Carolina from 830 to 2. We welcome everyone to come out. Um, basic registration is 15. The package is $30, which comes with a shirt. Got a few vendors out there, a few speakers out there. But it's just going to be a time to fellowship. But like you just said, Corona is out there. So this is a time for people to get out in the park. You still can social distance, but you might see somebody you ain't seen in a long time, and you can get your walk on. I'm looking forward to that. Yes, yes. Well, congratulations first, because like I said, I know we had talked a little bit during that process, so, but congratulations on, on getting that 501c3 status. I know that's big. 
And for those of you who maybe you did not listen, you did not hear the first uh, time that Corey was on, I would encourage you to stop, go back and listen, and then come back and finish so you could just hear about um, all of the great things that he has done and is doing, but since, and also just, I would say, some of the, the backstory in terms of why the foundation was created. Um, so like I said, congratulations. And also I wanna remind people, if you haven't registered, please register for the, mar the March. Like I said, I won't be there in person, but I will be walking virtually in partnership with it. Um, so like I said, there's ways to stay connected. So I guess if you could just, um, in terms of, I guess, just your story, your journey, like where are you um, in terms of that now that we are in 2022, which still feels like a continuation. Now, when we last spoke, I, I was just really getting my leg braces. We at the point now in therapy where I'm standing up without my leg braces. If you look on my social media platform, um, you will see my, my therapist has me standing up. She's blocking my knees, but I'm still basically standing up without her holding on to me. And what that's doing is putting pressure on my legs, whereas the leg braces just hold me back. So I still do the leg braces, but the, honestly, I'd rather just stand up without the braces because it's mm -hmm. it's more it's more realistic of me standing up on my own versus me got the leg braces and walking and, and the leg braces kind of pushes me back. Okay. So I enjoy that. On top of that, I have a personal trainer now. Okay. Um, um, a young man, Seven Nation um, Fitness, Conan Fernandez. He saw my story and he decided, you know how can I help this young man out? So his goal is to help me get back on my feet. So whatever I work on in physical therapy, I'll come to him and we'll continue that. So okay. his goal is to help me get on my feet. And mind you, this is pro bono. He's not doing this to make money. He's doing this because he wants to find a way to give back. So I'm constantly working out and you feel it. <laughs> I, I can imagine because... I've been trying to get back into it myself and it's like two three days off and it feels like it's been a couple of weeks and it's crazy how quickly it, like everything starts to deteriorate if you don't keep at it every day but that's great I'm happy to hear that um and another thing that I am I don't know if it's really like I said I got real hyped when I heard about it but your truck and the fact that you are driving again that was like I was excited, like, oh, yes, but it's like, wait, it's not me, it's him, but, but yeah, so, oh, like, tell, tell me a little bit, tell us a little bit more about that, yes. and, like, what that's been like. October, my, um, I got the hand controls put in my truck, so I've been driving since October. Uh, honestly, I forgot all about that, because when, <laughs> like, like, when you, when you see that, when others see stuff that's going on with me, they get excited, and I greatly appreciate that, but in my world, I'm just living to the next day. Mm -hmm. I even had to go retake my driver's license. I had to go retake the test. So I had to I had to drive with hand controls so they can see I got a hand controls. I, I passed the test, so I have a new license. But it just it's it's an every it's an everyday thing. Just like you get up, go to work. It's not it's natural. Somebody might say, "Oh, Latavia went to work today. Hey, that was great." <laughs> you looking like really? So for me to get up, it's, it's, it's my day-to-day -day routine. Like, I'm just, I just want tomorrow to be better than today. And you heard me say that last time. Mm -hmm. like, when I say I go, I work out, it, it's, it's hurting. The thing is, I can feel the pain, which I couldn't feel before, but it's still pain. Mm -hmm. so my doctor might look at it as good, good, good. You're feeling that, but, but, but I'm feeling that. And right, it hurts. Right. So that's what you gotta look at it. But me getting in the truck, it's it's so exciting. And some days I have to be careful because if my legs are hurting, I'm, I'm feeling my nerve pain. I can feel every pebble on the highway. Mm -hmm. Right. And you gotta remember, I got that big old truck with the mud tires on it. Yes, yes, that's a big one. So I can feel it, but it's 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 a blessing. It's like you just don't know the feeling. Just to be able, it's, it's getting my independence back. 
And that's mm -hmm. one thing I, I want to push with my foundation. I want to help people get their independence back. However that is, I'm all for it. I'm listening. But I want, when you're down and out, you got to remember, I went from walking to crawling overnight. I went, I was a person that I always did for others, I always was a go-getter. You need it, I got it, I'm doing it. Worked at Walmart for 20 years, then became a police officer. So I'm a public servant. I'm always helping people, whether helping you find some pillows, helping you get some groceries, helping you find your kid, helping you stop from speeding and drinking, <laughs> <laughs> helping you have a nice place to stay that night. <laughs> <laughs> That's but a helping. nice way to put it. <laughs> but, but helping people. So, and so to go from that to helpless. So I, I'm just enjoying it. Probably, well, I ain't gonna say probably. The walk is in March. Let's get this walk out the way by summertime. I'll be back to work. Now I won't be working full time, of course, but it'll uh -huh. just give me something to do to get out the house. And I enjoy talking to people. I, I just like doing things. That's why we're pushing this foundation and this walk. The donations are great, but it's more so as the I need the presence. I need the people out there. I need we need to, we need to spread the word. Mm -hmm. The word word of mouth is powerful. A lot of people don't realize that, but word of mouth is powerful. Some people are throw money at you and going about their business. You know, let's have a conversation. Let's talk about what's really going on. Because I might talk to one person here. You might go talk to five per five people there. Those five people might go talk to 10 people there. And you just, uh -huh. you're just spreading the word. You don't know where that person is going. You don't know what Zoom call they're on. You never know who hear you and hear your story. Oh, yeah. That is, that is true. And thank you for the reality check. Because uh, it's like, as you said, like sometimes we just take things for granted, but not really thinking about it. Like you said, the driving, the doing different things, it's a progress. And so for us, out for me, I'll speak for me, not others. Outside looking in, it's kind of like a big thing. But like you said, it is just a part of your day to day. Um, but I guess kind of with that, I guess, how do you balance or what is your approach to balancing that of, hey, this is this is my life, this is day to day, this is the norm, and I'm working on getting my independence back with the, the outsiders, you know, family, friends who all, I'm sure, mean well, but they're kind of making big deals out of a lot of things that, like you said, are just, this is, I'm just trying to do better tomorrow, today than I did yesterday. Like, how do you, what does that look like for you in terms of finding that balance? If it's safe to say, I honestly don't think about I like to say I don't think about it, but okay. at the same time, I still don't really think it hit me. Because I'm still going. Like okay. My my little boy, he loves, he loves riding my truck. We go somewhere, <laughs> Daddy, can we ride in your truck? Daddy, can we can we do this? My little girl, Daddy, can we get in the truck? That's great. So mm -hmm. in their eyes, that 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 will light me up. I love the fact now that we go for a ride and my wife is on the passenger side doing whatever she want to do. She don't, mm -hmm. have to, she don't have to always drive. So that's that's bringing it back to the norm for me. Okay. No, yeah, that, that's great. And like I said, you it's probably best to just not think about it. Because I know for me, when I start to start stop and start thinking about things and overthink, and then it becomes, it distracts from being present in the moment. And like you said, I think it's great to, I guess I, just like you said, the just the normal everyday things that that is becoming, you're able to get back to what was the norm prior to this, this diagnosis and then everything's shifting. So it's more about like, okay, hey, I, at the end of the day, I'm a, I'm a man, I'm a dad, I'm a, I'm a husband first. And so being able to do the day-to-day -day things and not being, you know, essentially, like you said, your wife being able to just ride and not have to be concerned with whether or not you're okay on top of everything else that she's dealing with. So um, I guess how has, I guess, how is she doing and, and how are you all doing in terms of just as the progress, I guess, what has that been like um, over the last few months or year? Much better because of, of the improvements, the things I couldn't do. I just stayed three months ago. 
I can mm-hmm. do it. So me, me being home by myself once again, uh, I'm meal prepping now. Sunday, I made 20 meals. Oh, if you want to send some, let me know. <laughs> so, <laughs> and it's, it's funny because after I made them, my wife said, okay, where are you going to put them? <laughs> or are you moving out of the refrigerator? That part. <laughs> did, did you think about that? <laughs> we got a minute, but if I want something to eat, I can just go grab something. I can eat something because I'm, I'm I'm eating more now because mm-hmm. I'm working out. But I was told you know, it don't do no good to work out if you're not eating, right? Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> You can work out all day, but if you don't change the eating, it doesn't really do much. Or at least eat. Well, I take that. You know, it just it just getting better. Like I'm starting to get sensation back in my legs, like little baby little baby steps. Mm -hmm. Like my my little boy walked by, hit me on my um, hit me on my leg, and I said, "Why you hit me, Tom? You felt that?" I said, "Yes, I felt that." But see, that's the type of stuff they do. Because mm-hmm. previously you hit me on my leg, I couldn't feel it. But that's just the small things of the sensation that's coming back. That's why I say my aim is to help people get their independence. For me to get back in my truck and drive with the um, hand controls, that mm-hmm. was giving me back my independence. I was assisted with that. Some of my frat brothers, they decided, you know, we're going to help Corey do this. They assisted with me, me with that. That stuff is not cheap. Mm-hmm. That's where the foundation is going to come in at. We're going to assist people with that. Whether it's something for your car, something for your home, widening the doors, um, something to eat at home, maybe help pay a bill. Simple, just mm-hmm. a sim- something that's simple to you might be mass major to me being in that situation. And people don't look at that. And another thing I always stress, being in a wheelchair, people don't see people in wheelchairs. Not adults don't see people in wheelchairs. Kids do. Adults try to walk over you. So if you ever in a shopping center or you someplace and you see somebody in the chair and it seems like they're angry, they're angry because they're tired of you walking over them. That's why they're hollering at you. Mm. People don't take that into consideration. I told my wife, I'm getting air home. So we're going to crowded place. And you don't see me? <laughs> you gonna hear me. <laughs> I don't think that's a good idea, but I'm gonna give me air horn. I mean, maybe not an air horn, you know, maybe a, 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 what is it, like the beep beep sound or something, I don't know. <laughs> it ain't loud enough. Yeah, I mean, cause at the end of the day, you are still a black man in America. So as I say, the bullhorn is like, mm, I know that it will be effective. <laughs> especially in the airport oh yeah definitely but I guess um sorry I'm processing because you give me a lot of things to think about in this sense like I said some things that I realize even I I don't think about and so in not thinking about it I'm not cognizant of what I'm doing or not doing so it's like okay let me like I'm processing, okay, let me, what are, what, what are some things that I can do, you know, kind of adjustments that I can make to make sure that I am being, I am helping, I am providing assistance as opposed to being a hindrance to someone. Um, so I know you said, like, it's often that children will notice people in wheelchairs, but adults tend to consciously or unconsciously try to walk over. So I guess, what are some other things that people listening can do or, not necessarily or not do to you know make the adjustments so that they are being of service or helpful as opposed to being a hindrance to to others specifically those um dealing with ms or who are currently in a wheelchair don't be so quick to help okay allow them to ask for help when you're i'm gonna use i'm gonna use me for example I went to my uh, college homecoming, past homecoming season. And everybody was walking around, you know, was tailgating, having a good time. So I'm rolling through the crowd too, you mm-hmm. know? So somebody looked at me, was like, where are you going? I said, where are you going? <laughs> but I know 
they were looking at me because I was rolling through the crowd in my chair. And I said, you're walking through the crowd. And I ask you why you walking through the crowd. This is my this is my ways of transportation. This is how I get around. But they didn't expect me to be because we was at the tailgate. I was back there with the bros. And, you know, it was crowded. And you know how when it's crowded, you got to squeeze your way through. And I was I was rolling through. Like move. Mm-hmm. So they looking at me like, you know, the brothers laughing like, oh, he's crazy, man. Yeah, <laughs> you do what you do. But don't use it as a hindrance. Um, somebody just asked me the other day, what can I do for you, man? You need anything? And I told him, he always asked me, you know my answer to that. I'm going to always say I'm good, but I'll tell you what you can do for me. Surprise me. If you know me or you know the person, mm-hmm. you know what they like, you might know what they need. That's what you do. They don't need you holding their hand. They don't need you walking up, pushing their wheelchair. If if you to know someone is to love them, that's what you do for them. If I know you like in the morning, you like some kind of coffee, you like um what's the coffee place I don't drink, I don't drink. Everybody love Starbucks. Starbucks. <laughs> if I know you like Starbucks, bring your Starbucks one morning. That because I've observed you and I know what you like. I know what you want. I don't know you know you, but I know a few things about you. So go for that. Go from there. Okay. That no, that makes sense. And, and what I'm hearing is uh pay attention. <laughs> pay attention to people. Attention. Uh, getting to know people and as I would say, and I think my dad has said it, you know, treat them how they want to be treated, not how you want to be treated, which goes against the whole golden rule, but it's like, no, actually treat them, find, like learn them, pay attention, and then uh, address them or interact, interact with them in the way that they have either told you or shown you that they want to be interacted with. My, my new slogan is my story is not my story. My your you said my story is not my story. Story is not my story. I'm not going through this for me. That is real, and I know even just from when you were like I said just from knowing you and and just watching everything that has happened, the impact it's had, as well as from when you were on um, before, just some of the feedback that I got, and it's you know finding out that some people that I knew or that they had you know, friends of family or extended family that they were also um, diagnosed with MS and had various levels of of challenges. Um, Like I said, for me, it was just an eye opener, but also the people listening shared that it was, it was great to hear and just the impact of you and your story and the things that you're going through. But also, I think it opened people's eyes to, hey, this is, one MS is real or just what MS is because I still don't think it's I think in kind of the I guess the grand scheme of things I know for me I knew of maybe one or two celebrities who had it but outside of that it's not something that is talked about as much and I know in my world wasn't and so it's like okay it's made me more aware of just like okay what is it and understanding that it looks different and it shows up different for every person, but not just the individual who has the diagnosis, but also their family and, and you know, that how it affects their world. So like I said, I appreciate you. I call it a social security number. Hmm? I call it a social security number. A social security number? Okay. But it shows up different for everyone. I promise you five people in your circle. I ain't gonna say in your immediate circle, but out of out of 25 people you know mm-hmm. about five of them have ms that's like it's, it's crazy to hear and even like even knowing what i know now it's still just because like you said it looks differently or it shows up differently for for everyone um and i know for me i can honestly say before finding out about um your diagnosis, I honestly didn't think that that would, because I asked the times that I heard about it, it was there might be a flare up or there might be uh, after so long, something might happen. It was 
but it wasn't something that was visible or where you dealt with like obviously you dealt with it every day but the 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 extremes of it were kind of sporadic I'm rare right and so then it's like hearing what happened with you I'm like wait no it's got to be something else like what no they messed up they need to run more tests they need to this or that which you know like I said obviously I know now differently but it's like I said it's it's just still mind-blowing in terms of just especially thinking all these years and here we are um in terms of still I guess from a science or medical standpoint of still trying to figure it out but to the flip side of that point huh I have primary progressive you have primary yes that means like primary is I had my 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 first flare-up was major but since my first flare-up I haven't had one okay so EPM primary progressive so I'm 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 headed back up. And okay. the thing is, now that I know about it, I did have a few symptoms. Just me never being sick. I mm-hmm. ignored them. Okay. So since like since when they was nudging me, I ain't paying no attention. It knocked me out. <laughs> it got, mm-hmm. he got my attention. So it was dormant. Okay. Hmm. But when I got it and I started talking about it, so many people around, like, I don't want to name drop, but we got another cousin that has it. Um, one of our cousin's best friends has it. Like, I mean, right there in our circle. But we got a cousin that's had it for forever. Oh, wow. But when I found out, I was like, wow. So I'm just, look, I'm just trying to bring awareness to it. That's all. No, yeah, I think that's important. Cause like you said, prior to had no clue that, oh wait, it's already in the family. So like I said, I think another, and, and that I'm hopeful that comes, I think it already has, but I hope that it'll continue that it will encourage more open communication amongst um with people you know amongst our family as well as others of like hey talk about what's going on and not necessarily trying to keep everything you know obviously we want to be private and there's you don't want to share everything but being more open to sharing and paying you know what is going on um with others in our immediate as well as extended families so that we're just we can be supportive but also increase our knowledge and awareness of of things that we may have to deal with or that people may be dealing with i say be the strength that's what i call it because you got to think about it you got somebody at home right now sitting at home that's so depressed thinking it's the end of the world thinking nobody wants to talk to them thinking nobody cares all because they choose not to share their story and nobody know what they're going through that's yeah that is real they there's might a see lot of your, people suffering in silence they might see your podcast hear the, hear the story and that might wake them up that is certainly the hope um like i said in terms of like you were saying what you know why you do what you do wanting to be help i've read i think i was aware of it but i definitely would say i feel like in in this last year kind of coming into the realization of i think that part of a big part of why I do this or just everything that I do is to encourage conversation. And so that, because I feel like the more that we talk about things, um, we're able to get the information out there. And then although, you know, we may not come up with a solution to a certain problem right away, but like you said, if I'm talking to you, then you talk to two more people and then they talk to people, the more that we're talking about it, the more that information is out there and then ideas are generations generated. And so that eventually it, it's gonna lead to people's perspectives being shifted as well as solutions to some of these problems that we've been having for generations. The solution is gonna come out of that. And like, you know, like, I, I don't know, we talked about it before, but I've heard the same, you know, the concept of just because I plant the seed doesn't mean I'm gonna be the one 
to see it, you know, the crop right. harvested, you know, it's like some, some plant, some water, some harvest. And so it's like just being a part of that process uh, is, is important to me. And so, like I said, I think that's what you're doing is an, is an example of that. But um, earlier you mentioned that starting somewhere this summer or by June, that you'll be returning to work. So in returning to work, does that mean with the police force or something different? I miss being a police officer. Now, I don't see myself getting back in the car riding around anymore, but I can do mm -hmm. something behind the scenes. Okay. Yeah, I know before be you something. mentioned you planning to go back. So that is that is happening. Okay. It's something to do. It, it'd be something to do with law enforcement. Okay. So that's still being, I guess, the details of what that will be is still being worked out. To be determined. To be determined. Okay, well, all right. You'll be in law enforcement, but I'm going to focus on the positives of that. You're helping people still. Um, so I guess what else is going on with you or anything else that, I guess, well, not so much is going on, but I guess if the walk, I know that's coming up, but I guess, what has that process been like in terms of just I know, from the idea to the organi organizing it, to, you know, now it's, it's, it is happening. It was an idea. Um, I have a coordinator, um, a young lady, she, she created her own business called Plan Plans on Us. And what that is, make sure I got that name right, I don't want her to fuss at me. <laughs> what that is, her company plans your day. Okay. Well, whether it be you wanna, you want to, I she, somebody wanted her to plan their Christmas. So what she did was they contacted her company, mm -hmm. and she planned out the whole day for Christmas. They didn't have to do anything. She planned their day. Nice. So that's what it is. Plans plans on us. So they 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 basically, you want to take your boyfriend on a date, your fiance on a date, your husband on a date, wife, etc. She planned the day. All you got to do is give her an idea, and she and she planned the day. How many nice. times have you, how many times have you a boyfriend and a girlfriend? How many times has a couple got together and said, "Let's go get something to eat." And you sit mm -hmm. in the car about 10, 15 minutes trying to figure out where you're going to go eat. <laughs> so with that saying, yeah. me, and her was, me and her was talking, and she's coordinated the walk for me. So when we put it out there, I expected people to jump on quicker mm -hmm. than, they, than they have. But it, it's a slow it's a slow start. People starting to jump on out of there, getting closer. But I did, I did want at least 100 people to register. Okay. So we're not we're not close to that yet, but people are starting to sign up. Like I say, we're getting vendors involved. One of the therapists at my physical therapy um, place, she she's going to speak, talk about MS. So personal trainer, he's going to speak. Excuse me. Another young lady contacted me out of uh, Florence from one of the schools, saying, "Hey, she would like one of her friends has MS. Like they did a walk with me uh -huh. last year at Sneed Middle School, but she she like to make ribbons and." bracelets and stuff like that so she's gonna have a table where she's gonna sell stuff and all proceeds going to the foundation the biggest thing is we getting we just getting started so getting the capital up so we can really start making a difference in people's lives okay, and one no, of the, I... one of the biggest struggles i have is people that really know me they don't realize this is a business it's not just, and not just something i'm playing with Hey dog, mm -hmm. I'm gonna send you. I'm gonna send you a couple of dollars, and, and I want to do this. No, it's a, it's, a, it's a website. I mean, it's an email. I need you to send that to the foundation. Hey, this is a real legit business. It is, I told one guy it was a 501c3 organization. He said, "What is that?" I had to tell him it's a tax write off. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm with it. No man, it's it, it's a business. People got well, to yeah, understand. I, no, yeah, and it's almost like there's a 
like a double educational component to it. It's like on one hand, like, yes, I need to educate, I want to educate you and make you aware of what MS is, its impacts and how, hey, this is how you can support. But like you said, also, this is not a hobby. This is not just something I'm just doing, you know, hey, around the way, but no, this is, this is a business. This is what we're doing. This is what a business is. And this yeah. is how the foundation works. Uh, and this is what I need you to do to not only support me, but support the people that we are, you know, are, are in turn will support. So I know you said it's kind of, Tom, go ahead. No, I've asked a few doctors, a um, few specialists, use me as a vessel. If you're sitting, if you got a client or a patient and you know they need something, you can't for say, you know, give me their name, you know, but you can give them my information, the foundation information and put them in touch with me. And who knows who might can help out that person. That, that's how yeah, that's my name's going to get out there. Use me as a vessel. Right. And I know you that you all are, it's, you're still growing or, or so I imagine priority right now is in the Columbia and South Carolina areas, but are you all now or in the future planning? So like if there's people, you know, in terms of people who need support in Maryland or other states, is that something that you all are, you know, where you'll provide support or resources to people outside of your area? That, that's the plan. I would love to be able to do that. We're gonna start at okay. home, we're gonna create our name, but I would love to be able to do that. Okay, well, like I said, you know. MS don't have no area code. Wherever, you know, whatever I can do, let me know um, and I will continue to do that in terms of support. But I know in terms of the walk, you said donations, of course, those are helpful, but also having people there, like having bodies there for the walk. Um, so could you let, where can people go to register for the walk? whether they want to register or donate. You can go on my Facebook page, Corey Mitchell MS Foundation. You can go on Instagram, the C-M, the T-H-E underscore C-M-M-S Foundation. That's on Instagram. Those are the two. And you can go to my personal Facebook page, Corey Mitchell. You can find out all of that. To donate, you can donate the C-M-M-S Foundation at gmail.com which is PayPal, or you can go to dollar sign CMMS Foundation, which is Cash App. If you go to any of those sites, look for this logo. That's how you know that's an official site. The logo is the back. The logo is the, the um, what you call it? The, um, the logo is, the, is, is what comes up. If you don't see that logo, okay. it's, not, it's not me. Also, okay. uh, you can go to the, the CMMS Foundation at myshopify.com and you can see the apparel for okay. the foundation. My thing is, the more people start seeing that, the, the, the more, you know, we'll, we'll get out there. Every day you see me in something with, my, with the foundation on it, all the way down to water bottles. I got a raincoat, like you name it. Is, is there oh y'all have expanded since like i mean i got my shirt and my mask i gotta go on there and uh up my yeah. up my merch and you got you got to go on the website and the thing about it when you go on there all proceeds go to the foundation none of none of this money goes to my my household okay all of this goes to the foundation setting up to give back to people in need since i've been going through my situation much support, outpouring love, people assisting me. So it will, I would just be a fool not to go out and help others. And then that's what my family is known about. We always help them. <laughs> that's what we do. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what we do. I, I, can, I can attest to that firsthand. Um, I would say I got a little bit of that. Uh, I would say I get it naturally. Um, but no, that's great. So I'll be sure to include all of that information in the, the show notes. So in terms of like links for people to be able to go to that, you know, in case you missed it while you were listening, it'll be there for you to, to click the links as well. Um, so like I said, I am looking forward to the walk. Uh, if it's, and if you register, so I, 
Mm-hmm. But if you register for the packet, which is thirty dollars, um, the shirts will be ready the day of the walk. That's when we're giving them out. But they're gonna be shirts specifically for the walk. But okay. if you're out of state or out of town and you register, I will send. I will mail you the shirt. Okay. If you just want a shirt and you you make a donation and you want a shirt, let me know that. I'll mail you a shirt. I have no okay. problem sending them out because word of mouth is the most powerful thing. For somebody to be in one of the shirts you have was sent to Korea. All right. One of my classmates from high school, her husband's in um mil- in the service. Mm-hmm. She's over there with her husband, her family. She ordered a shirt. Appreciate it. Word of mouth goes oh, a yeah. long way. But yes, it you does. go on the website, you will see a whole lot more stuff. All the way down to well, women's I mean, tights. Well, when we finish today, I will be logging on to the website so I can add some stuff to go with my shirt. Um, and if you all, uh, if you're looking, if you're watching, his backdrop is is the logo. And so I know that that's on um, on some of the merchandise as well. But if you're listening, Make sure you click the link so you can go see it for yourself and order it. And like I said, this is, as he mentioned, it's not to go to him directly. This is to continue providing awareness and as well as support, kind of the everyday support that people uh, with, MM, with MS and their families that they need. And I know that there is the, I guess there's different foundations and things that focus on kind of the research and this, the scientific medical aspect of it. But I think what sometimes gets, I don't say lost in, lost in the sauce, lost in transla- translation is, hey, this, that's important and we need those things. But it's also the day-to-day. Like, like you said, there's, there's some day-to-day things that you right, wrong, or indifferent, we forget. And we take for granted that like you said that it could mean the world it can mean the world of a difference to someone else and so I know for me as I have gotten my reality check today is to like I said adjusting my thinking and to make sure that I'm being more cognizant of those that I'm interacting and my and just kind of a reminder of hey you, you can't judge a book by its cover just because someone doesn't look like they're dealing with something or even if they do look like they're dealing with something you don't know what they exactly need without getting to know them so I guess for me it's like not jumping to the conclusion that somebody needs help or doesn't need help but allowing giving them the space and the grace to to ask for it um and to let you in so I thank you for that (laughs) um like I said is there anything else uh like I said just going on with you the foundation the family Anything else that, um, like I said, that you want to share with the people? My baby girl will be eight next week. Oh, goodness. (laughs) Uh, That that means we're getting older, wiser. I'm like, why? I don't get old. I get better. All right. You get better. We're getting better. We're getting better. Well, an early happy birthday to her. And I am... Go ahead. One big thing I want to leave off with, whatever someone is going through, allow them to be their self. Don't, don't try to think you know what they're going through or think you know how they feel because we it's, it's all different from all of, all of us. If I pulled up right now in my truck, you wouldn't know anything was wrong with me. Until I, so you see me open the door and my wheelchair come across me and I'm, I'm assembling my wheelchair. You would never know it. Talking to me, and don't be scared of them. A lot of people be scared of because you you you're not how I remember you. Well, you know how I remember you. <laughs> so, and and that's all I'm gonna say. Just allow somebody to be themselves. <laughs> and remember, my story is not my story. And you can contact me on any of them platforms. I don't mind talking about my story. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you said a whole lot without saying a lot <laughs> is it not the truth it, no and that's, that's what I'm laughing it's funny because it's true um but <laughs> I'm sorry okay but no thank you like I said I 
thank you for for joining me again um like i said thank you for your willingness to share your story and so for those of you listening or watching thank you all for doing that um remember that regardless of what it looks like or feels like today that is just today and it's a part of the journey it's a process learn to embrace and enjoy the process as difficult as that may be some days but in the end it's all good um, so again, thank you all for listening. Be sure to like, comment, or su subscribe wherever you are listening or watching the podcast. And until next time. I'll say one last thing. Go ahead. In the words of our grandmother, if you call grandma right now and you say, how you doing? How you doing today, grandma? What would, do you know what she would say? You remind me. She said, I'm in the number. D yeah. So remember, you still in, if you listening to this, if you're watching this, you still in the number. So we're going to be grateful for that. Have a go. I'll see you later.